Hi, welcome to the Revelation of Jesus. This is episode 34, and we are going to be in Revelation chapter 8. This chapter is divided into two sections. First section deals with the heavenly scene, what we see in the, in the sanctuary in heaven. And the second is the, uh, the falling of the, uh, the effects of the seven trumpets and so of the plagues. So I'm excited that you have your Bible, your pen, your highlighter, taking notes um, because we're going to go deep. So let us pray. Father God, thank you once again for this opportunity to open your word to learn. We want to have another revelation of Jesus. So we invite your spirit to speak to us and to teach us. Hide me behind the cross is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So it starts by saying, Revelation chapter 8 verse 1 says, When he opened the seven seals, there was silence in heaven for half an hour. In my notes here, I have here, the silence of the first verse is, is a surprise, right? We've had <laughs> all the seals, right? All the drama with all of the seals, you know, the sixth seal with all the, 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 the lightning and the earthquakes, right? And then we go to chapter 7 when we are in the throne room and, and the question is asked, who is gonna, who's able to stand? And, and, and we see the 144,000, the great multitude. And then chapter 8 starts off by saying that the Lamb opens the seal and that there was silence. It's like, wah, wah, like, like so anticlimactic. It says here in my notes that the silence is, is, is dramatic and says one might expect a final elaboration. But no, the reader experiences humbling, expectant silence. Silence is often noted in the Old Testament as a powerful prelude when God is about to judge the enemies of his people. All right. So every time you see in the Bible that there was silence, it's like when my mom used to say, don't worry, wait till your father gets home. Right. And you'd be like, OK, you, you, you know that trouble was coming. Look at what the Bible says. And if you have your notes, I'm going to read the verses. You can write them down. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 7 says, Be silent before the sovereign Lord, for the day of the Lord is near. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 6 says, See, it stands written before me. I will not keep silent, but will pay back in full. And then in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 1 says, be silent before me, you islands. Let the nations renew their strength. Let them come forward and speak and let us meet together at the place of judgment. Now, remember, this is God speaking to the wicked, right? And so the next point is for half an hour. And the significance of the half hour is enigmatic. We don't know what that means. Uh, it, it probably indicates just the briefest space of time. All right. So let's go now to verse 2. Verse 2 tells us, And I saw the seven angels who stand before God. Seven angels. In my notes here, it says that we don't know who these seven angels are. This is the first time in the Bible they're being mentioned. Now, in Jewish tradition, they identify seven angels that stand before God. And they are Uriel, Raphael, Raguel, Michael, uh, Saraquel, Gabriel, I know Gabriel, and Remiel. Now it says here that many scholars believe that John refers to these seven angels, yet these, uh, these angels are missing from the heavenly company described in Revelation chapter 4, verse 5. However, that may be the seven angels are a special class of heavenly beings. And what they're saying is that these, it's quite possible that these seven angels are the same angel that we will see who will pour out the, the plagues in chapter 15 and 16. But with that said, let's keep reading. It says here in verse 2, And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given 
seven trumpets. Now trumpets, I have here in my notes, trumpets played a major part in the national life of ancient Israel. It says they were blown by the priest and they, they were different purposes. So if, you, if you're writing your notes in your notes, it says the priest would blow the trumpet to call the people together, right? So that's uh, Numbers chapter 10, verse 2 through 10. The priest would sound the trumpet, would blow the trumpet when they were sounding the alarm in times of war. And that's Numbers chapter 10, verse 3, and Numbers 10, verse 9. They also blew the trumpet for celebration or religious festivals. And that's Numbers chapter 10, verse 10. But they also blew the trumpet during the temple services. And that is what we're going to see. What we're seeing in heaven is actually a temple service. Look what, look what happens, right? In verse 3. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. And he was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Let me just keep reading. And it says, And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth, and there was noises, thundering, lightnings, and an earthquake. All right, let's unpack this. It says here in my notes. This scene is built on the Old Testament sacrificial system, right? As, as it, let, me, let me remind you, it says here, which when they would present the daily sacrifice, the trumpets were blown by the priest. And after the sacrificial lamb had been placed upon the altar of burnt offering, and the blood of the sacrifice had been poured out at the base of the altar, right? So this was happening, if you know the sanctuary, this was during uh, outside in the outer court, they had an altar of sacrifice. And this was happening outside, right? You would bring the lamb, uh, the, the priest would, would slit his throat, and then would, he would catch the blood in, in, in the cup. You would place the lamb on the altar of sacrifice. And then he says, the assigned priest would take the golden censer and offered incense upon the golden altar inside the temple. So he would then go inside the temple and pre present this uh, incense before the altar that represented the prayers of the people. And after offering the incense, the priest came out to bless the people who were waiting quietly in the co court. And at that moment, the seven priests blew their trumpets, marking the end of the daily sacrifice ceremony. It says here, the angel in Revelation 8 receives the incense with the prayers of the saints at the altar of burnt offering. This is especially significant in light of the fact that in the scene of the opening of the fifth trumpet, the slain beneath the altar of burnt offering prayed for judgment on those who dwell on the earth. That was Revelation chapter 6, verse 10. And then it, and, and in Revelation 8, verse 3 and 4, these prayers of the saints are mentioned again, and the angels offering of the incense upon the altar before the throne of God. Now, according to Revelation chapter 5, verse 8, this incense represents the prayer of the saints, and they are event, event, evidently the prayers for judgment, and judgment of the saints under the altar. Remember, they were asking, you know, when will you avenge us, right? When, when will we have justice? And it says, And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the hand of the angel. Here is firm assurance that the prayers of the saints beneath the altar reach the throne of God and are heard by God in their heavenly place. In the heavenly place. Then, let's just leave it here for today. The point is that God, every prayer that is lifted, he knows and he hears. He hears. At, and at a specific point in time, he is going to answer the prayers. So this is where now we're about to see 
God is about to answer the prayers of those saints. And this is our lesson for today. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.